Hi, I'm Allison Hill, and I'll be your instructor. This course will introduce you to more data science tools from the Tidyverse to help you work with your data better using the R programming language. You'll learn to explore, tame, tidy, and transform your data in R. We'll start at the beginning of the data science pipeline by reading data into R, which is an important first step to working with your own data. We'll focus on reading rectangular data into R. In rectangular data, columns hold variables like series and baker. Here, column names are in the first row. Each column holds different kinds of data, like numbers, characters, or dates. Rows correspond to observations on an individual unit. Here, the first row holds values corresponding to Natasha from Series 3. We are looking at data from a popular television baking competition called the Great British Bake Off. In it, amateur bakers compete against each other, facing different baking challenges that test their skills. Let's see how this looks in R as a tibble. First, this data has a name, bakers. When we call bakers, a tibble with rows and columns is printed. A tibble is a special kind of data frame. Data frames are useful because column values in the same row correspond to the same observation. Don't be confused by the terms tibble and data frame. For this course, the most important thing to know is that they both store rectangular data in R. The readr package is for reading rectangular data into R. We'll use the read underscore CSV function to read data from a CSV file, which stands for comma separated values. This means that commas separate values within a row, and each row is a new observation. Think of read underscore CSV like a recipe. It tells R what to do and how to do it. But every recipe needs ingredients. In the same way, functions need arguments to work. Function arguments go within the parentheses. So how do you know which arguments to use? In your R console, you can type question mark then the name of the function to see the help documents. Let's zoom in on usage first. Usage tells you the ingredients for this recipe. The first here is file. Others have an argument name on the left, like call underscore names. An equal sign separates the argument name from the value on the right. Read underscore CSV will use these argument values unless you override them. The default values are sensible, so it's good practice to start experimenting with the arguments that don't have defaults first. We will start with the file argument, which has no default value and must be set. After usage are the arguments. The file argument is a path to a file. We'll provide a single string, which means the path needs to be in quotes. We use the assignment operator to name this new object bakers. The read underscore CSV function goes on the right. The only argument is the name of the file in quotes. If your data and script are in the same directory, R will look for the named data file in that directory. We'll dig deeper into this output in chapter two. But for now, read R was able to parse each column, which means we are ready to proceed. Let's look at the baker's data. Typing bakers prints the tibble to our console. We see 10 observations of six columns or variables. The column names, variable types, 
and values look right here. In the exercises, you'll see some examples of when these look wrong. The Read R package has other functions to read in different rectangular file formats. There are also tidyverse packages like Haven and Read Excel for reading in other file types. Now, let's practice reading in a new CSV file of the Bake Off data. <laughs> 